Welcome back to another hour of Scotch Hour. I am Noah. And I'm Jesse. All right. Well, hopefully everyone had a great, wonderful week. Uh, this week, uh, what we have in store for you is a new Scotch here for us. It's from the Lowlands, I believe. Uh, and I'll probably butcher the name, but Ak Untoshin or, so, Ak Untoshin it, or Ak something. Ak Untoshin. So, Ak Untoshin. Ak Untoshin. It sounds more German than it does like Gaelic, but... Very German, which is tragic because at the beginning of World War II, the Germans bombed it and created huge <laughs> damage that ultimately shut it down. <laughs> I read that too. Uh, from there, we got our uh, shout outs and get it together. And to uh, stay on topic uh, or, or on theme for once, our restaurant review uh, was a, uh, a Japanese restaurant called Mount Fuji. And our movie was The Bullet Train. Ah, uh, that's the uh, Sparty Challenge. Scotch review. Ah, untoshin. <laughs> <laughs> well, this Lowland single malt Scotch whiskey is their American oak, smooth and vibrant, triple distilled in. Single and double filled ex bourbon casks. It looks pretty interesting. We haven't had a ton of lowland scotches, but we're finding them more and more prevalent now. Is that because they've always been there? Not sure. Obviously, historically, unless they're adding these things to the history books, these guys have been there for a while. But it's a good looking box, good looking bottle. It's not like that uh, Hamilton's I tried where it had a screw top. That's always disappointing. Right. The shape is a little different. It's not the normal round we often see. Uh, a little more cylindrical in the sense of oval or egg-shaped. Isn't that like the one that uh, they changed the way their bottle get, uh, when they go near that? Um, Jura? Yeah. Yeah, Jura saying they shaped their bottles that way so they could get past the uh, tidal wave. Yeah. <laughs> Not the tidal wave, but the whirlpool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Kennedy Glocken. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking of. Exactly. So a little history about Ak Untushun is... 1823 the distillery distillery established and it's interesting because they're talking about how important dates are to them and all their dates are all about how they change hands right? <laughs> i know <noticed> that too <laughs> you get to like the last 20 years 1823 1878 1903 1941 also when they were bombed by the germans <laughs> 1960 1969 84 uh, all have ownership changes. Yeah, and the, the latest being when Suntory bought it in 94, um, and it looks like it has not changed hands since that point. So good job, Suntory, uh, for looking like it appears going to be the one company who will hold it the longest unless something changes very soon. Well, looking at the history here, they are uh, due to sell. <laughs> hey, guys, let's... Time to sell and reinvest. <laughs> Let's go find another one. Uh, some, uh, something I did uh, look at here is that since they actually have been around, um, they actually do have tours. Yeah, I saw that. Some pretty extravagant ones. Yeah, so they have the Ultimate Tour, which starts at 60 quid. Then we got the uh, Essence Tour, just like uh, step down, uh, 40 quid. Then you got just a regular uh, tasting one for 30 quid. And then you got the origin for 15, where I guess you just kind of show up there and like, hey, this is our brewery. This is our distillery. <laughs> I think we need to talk like the Dillman's while we do the show. But the really cool one sounds like it might be uh, behind closed doors. That's where, what she uh, said. <laughs> where you can actually get like a private tour and all that stuff after 5 p.m. <laughs> And that's uh, 200 quid. After 5 p.m. or before 6 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be not the bourbon casks, but the uh, morning wood. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's break this seal. Uh, nice foil top, gray and black. You know. Morning wood breaking seal. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Morning Dew. Uh, let's see if there's any uh, moist air. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there we go. That was a little bit of dew. Now, one thing I am remembering, 
about some of these lowland scotch, single malt scotches we have had is that they did seem somewhat creamy and from what I remember, um, citrusy. Okay. I'm not sure had, how this one will turn out. We've only had two before, right? Um, the McLaren's. The, what was that fancy one you bought in the dark bottle down there? I don't know. I'm trying to look for it. Taller, taller. Isn't that behind you somewhere? It might be on the backside. Oh, uh, Bladock, maybe? Bladock. Yeah, that was another one. I feel like there was a third. I don't think so. All right. Maybe it is just two. Maybe there's a third, but I don't, I don't know. Was Tamdu a uh, lowland? Tamdu might have been it. Maybe. I don't know. Hmm. We'll, have to, we'll have to look back at that. But here we go. We're going to test this Lowland single malt scotch whiskey. Triple distilled for clarity. Every last drop. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just remember them putting it on their website. That was very important to them. Every last drop has to be triple distilled. So I'm, I'm sorry. You are about to say something. Nah, I, I totally just, interrupted uh, you. I, I apologize. No, it's just... Uh, I see a lot of what looks like particulates for something that's purified, triple distilled three times to be pure. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I see some particulates in there. All right. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Warp speed. For my review <laughs> of Oct und Tunschun, um, I will first start off with color. It is like a light gold color. As you mentioned, you do see some particulates in there, even though it's been triple distilled. I'm not saying I'm particular, but there are particulates. <laughs> Part, oh, did I say particulars? No, you're good. Or did I say particulates? You're good. You said particulates. <laughs> okay. I was trying to put a pun in there for you. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, did I say the wrong word? No, you're good. <laughs> um, it does have a light gold color to it. Um, now, when I do smell uh, in the uh, bouquet of it, um, I'm getting like hints of uh, charred wood um, with um, some hints of citrus and vanilla. Um, and there's also something else there, like burning spice. <laughs> So I, at first I wasn't really sure if it's the alcohol uh, that was burning my nose or if it was spice that's burning my nose, but I'm, uh, I've let it sit for a little while. And even when I have let it sit for a while, I'm still getting that burning kind of sensation. So I'm, I'm thinking it might be uh, some spice there. Um, as far as the palate goes, um, I get some vanilla cream, uh, <laughs> peach, and um, some citrus. And uh, I'm going to give you the credit for pinpointing that peach because at first I was tasting something and I couldn't pinpoint it. And I think when you mentioned peach, I uh, that's totally what it was. Um, so that's that's where I'm getting that peach from. Now the finish, here's something I noticed. Like even from the mid palate to the, to the finish, uh, it mostly coats the outer side of the, of, of the inside of your mouth. Like, uh, like right where the tongue is in the mid part of your mouth. Um, it just seems to kind of like not hit there, at least not in, in my opinion. And when you get to the finish, you just really have like a a coat of spiciness going all the way around, but nothing like really hits your tongue until the very end of that, of that spiciness. And um, it's you know it, it's kind of funny because you get that hint of spice, and it does linger there. And I normally I would just say because of how it hits your like your mid like the mid to back palate, I'd say it was pretty like a light bodied one. But like the way it coats the mouth and how it hits that spiciness, I'm like, I'm not really sure if I would really call it light, but it is kind of a light one. Um, would I take this to a uh, poker game? Hell yeah, I would take it to a poker game. <laughs> but you want to know why? Not because I want to impress my friends. Because you're going to leave it. Because <laughs> I'm going to leave it and I'm going to have them drink it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> when I take it to the house party or a party, if I don't like the people, yeah, I'm going to take it so that way other people can drink it. Um, is this something that I would want to, you know, um, buy and keep at the house? Yeah, only if I want to serve it to people I don't really like to come to my house. Uh, or, or maybe, you know, or some, like, food cooking. Well, I was about to mention this. <laughs> On their website, they talk about, like, yeah, it can stand on its own or you can blend it. Now, I think, uh, by the way it tastes, it probably would be more better for blending or um, even putting into food to cook it, you know. So, like, I think it might be a good a good scotch whiskey if I don't want to spend a ton of money to make the, uh, the scotch uh, Sloppy Joes or something like that. But... Um, I mean, for the price point, I didn't really expect a whole lot, but we have been getting you know, pretty lucky with stuff right around that, like that $40 range. Uh, this one, I think, uh, so far out of all the $40 ranges, probably not my favorite. Because it was American Oak, I had my high, my my, my hopes up pretty high for it. Um, it's not, I mean, honestly, it's not like, I'm, I'm kind of bashing it, and it's really not like that bad. I mean, it's still pretty quaffable, still pretty drinkable, but some of the other ones that we've had the past couple of weeks in the same dollar range, I would rather drink those than this one. Uh, for me, you know, it's interesting. It does start out bright gold color. Like, it is right there. It is a very, and bright, I think, for me, is the right word. Because the, when the light catches it, it absolutely shines like a gold light bulb. It, it is very bright. On the nose, for me, I've, I've had a little bit more time to smell and taste to lick the roses and with that on the nose for me and the first time i tried smelling this i thought my nose was gonna burn for a 40 percent abv the uh, nose hit hard but now that it's had a little bit of a chance to air out it is absolutely vanilla a little bit of sitness fruit we got a little bit of lemon and grapefruit in there for me and it does follow up with something that's interesting and it's peach and normally when i think of these things i think the the creamy flavor is coming from the vanilla this time i think it's coming from this peach flavor so you got the vanilla as a true vanilla like you just look that vanilla bean followed by the citrusy uh slight citrusy simpleness and then transitioning into peach and that is very similar to what it's like on the palate for me there i do get and at first i didn't but on the palate the peach and vanilla are mixed together right at the front creating this creamy flavor followed by that little hint of citrus not as much as you get on the nose but a little hint of citrus and i think this is where it actually gets a little fun for me you talked about the finish and i think this is where great american oak the american wood comes in strong and that is it gives a great finish it uh, blends with those flavors holds on to them it could be the fact that it's you know triple distilled or aged in single and double uh, filled bourbon casks but it absolutely pulls that vanilla flavor from but probably, as you mentioned, the charred casks, very, very deeply charred casks. Um, but the finish is just this great woody peach. And there is absolutely, for me, it's a medium to long finish because that peach, and that American oak and peach transition to a blend of, and you said it, burnt clove and cinnamon. And it's there. And it's not bad. It's just not like, oh, this is exciting. It's just not bad. And for me, would I take it to, a, you know, over to, um, if I take it anywhere, would I take it anywhere? Yes. If I'm not trying to impress anyone. If I'm afraid they might just shoot it or blend it. This is a great scotch for that. What was it? $35 price point. Yeah. It's like maybe slightly under 40. I'm not yeah. really sure what it was. 35 to 40. We'll say $40 price point. Not afraid of blending this at that point. You're spending as much on a good gin as you would the single malt scotch. Feel free to blend a drink. Um, it's, it's, um, it's fun. It's got good flavor. I think it's typical, fairly typical for us for lowlands. Very creamy, a lot of vanilla, a little bit of that spice. Um, the one thing it's missing, and I think the only one that you got was that uh, fancy blandle 
uh, lowland scotch, it's just not sexy, <laughs> right? Like, it's not like, hey, man, that guy's the man. He's got his uh, Lagavulin 16 in one arm and his uh, Dan Wesson discretion in the other, you know? This isn't a John Wick scotch. <laughs> yeah, John Wick's a bourbon guy. I get it. John Wick 4 coming to theaters March 2023. But with that, man... Um, it is still a good scotch. I, I would not hesitate to take it other places. And again, you kind of we joke about these things, but it's completely true. If I take a bottle of Lagavulin 16 to a place and I, I see anyone about to shoot it, I'm slapping their hand, right? <laughs> I'm like, uh-uh, you put that down. You're like, do not put that anywhere near your mouth if you're going to shoot it or mix it. And then at the end of the night, half a bottle left, boop. Taking that thing home. This one, half a bottle left. You guys have a good night. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> but still fun. Very typical Lowland as we continue to branch out of some of our favorites. Um, it is interesting to see the more we go to the Lowlands, there are some truths and some differences. Um, uh, even with like, you know, I, I think when you really think about the islands, they sum it up best. Isla is extremely different than Jura, and they're both islands, really close in proximity. But at the end of the day, it is distillery to distillery. What are they using as their materials? Um, good scotch. I wonder if their water source is as good as some of the other places' water sources. I'm thinking not, because for, first of all, during World War II, they shut down the distillery because their water source was constantly getting bombed because it was a main waterway for traffic, for transportation of goods. Now, anytime you get a waterway, a main waterway of transportation of goods, you have those vehicles absolutely smoking, polluting other things into that waterway. It's not like a fresh natural spring that the Glen Morangi or many of these uh, which scotches. One ha- which, which one has like the gold flakes in them or something? Uh, or man. talked about having gold in the water. Oh. There, there was one, right? I'm not making Aberfeldy. This. Ab- okay, Aberfeldy. Yeah. Aberfeldy, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I, I wasn't making that up. No, right? no. Okay. They, uh, there was a uh, gold-rich water source. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of these are naturally flowing springs um, coming from deep within. So, in other words, the earth itself is... Purifying. Yeah. And, uh, no, I don't... I would guess this was... Not one of those. That's not purified. <laughs> <laughs> like reverse osmosis, maybe. <laughs> I don't know that I want it purified. I want some of those hard elements or some gold in my drink. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't have anything else but to say about this one. Like, I know I was a little bit harsh on it, um, but it really isn't all that bad. I think, it, I, th- I mean, you're not going to, like, impress anybody with it, but you're not going to, you, you know I mean, you're not going to, like, go crying in a corner with it either yeah, i don't know that you wouldn't impress some people with it i don't know that everyone's had that dalmore cigar mall <laughs> 15 or 18 you know <laughs> uh do you have anything else you want to say about no it? It, for me it is actually it's a fun experience i'm enjoying it and as it continues to open up i'm getting more of a spice that is mixed with that wood that peach and that vanilla and i'm actually enjoying it the peach was actually a nice surprise i did like the peach flavor in there I can eat a peach for hours. It's time for our shout outs. Man, this is the tough one. Really got no shout outs. Like, I'm not impressed with the Senate, Congress, uh, the FBI. I'm not impressed. Uh, with much of anything that's gone on this past week, um, I'm very curious if the inflation data will come back as I think it will or not in the next week. Uh, we'll see. Time will tell. Yourself, what are your shout outs? So if I'm going to go out on a limb here, I'm just going to give a shout out to everyone out there who does have a job and it's capable of working. Um, I think it's important, you know, for... Uh, for people to have that sense of uh, pride or goal or uh, be doing something uh, to where they're, you know, being able to, like, be, you know, to do something, you know, get some kind of, like, um, satisfaction out of out of work or whatever. Um, I'm not going so far as saying, like, uh, I'll buy the mock or anything like that where it works sets you free. 
Um, <laughs> and I'm not trying to be like, a, you know, talking about like any kind of concentration camps there type of work. But I do think it, it does help people to have a job. And, you know, if it gets you up in the morning, gets you to do things, uh, it helps you like, be more productive in life. And so I think um, for that, for anyone who, you know, for everybody out there who is capable to have a job and then does have a job, I just want to give them a shout out. Give them a shout out. Nice. Contributing to society and their community. Yeah. I mean, contributing to themselves, I guess. I mean, because there are people out there who are capable of working, but they refuse to work. And those are not contributing to society or community. Exactly. Um, I do have a get it. Let's get start it together. with your get it together. All right. So this evening while we were at dinner, apparently it broke that the FBI raided Donald J. Trump's home in uh, Mar-a-Lago in Florida. Uh, apparently, they were raiding his place to search for classified docs. Now, this had already happened once before where they contacted Trump and said that he had classified docs, which he didn't because he had already declassified them before he left the office of the presidency. And uh, Trump was actually in New York City uh, when this occurred. And then the White House, Biden's White House, said that they, quote, unquote, had no idea this was going on. I find this very odd. I don't. Biden doesn't know anything that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're true. that is very true. Biden does not have a clue what's going Biden on. Biden actually thinks he's lowered gas prices, not really realizing they're still twice as high as they were 18 months ago. Like, <laughs> uh, but I just find it, it's, it's very odd how um, after 2000 Mules came out, the movie, Everyone was watching to see uh, if they're going to be uh, committing any kind of like uh, election fraud in Arizona. And then Carrie Lake was, uh, you know, their numbers were coming in and stuff like that. And then uh, once they got to a certain point in one of the biggest district uh, counties there in, in Arizona, and they saw that Carrie Lake was starting to run away with it, all of a sudden, like, all the counting stopped for like almost 48 hours. And finally, they kind of came to the realization, like, they had, they basically, they either get caught, uh, you know, committing election fraud or they have to announce that Carrie Lake was, had won. So they announced that she'd won. Then there was a big, huge CPAC uh, meeting there in Texas. Um, and Trump talked about some stuff there. And uh, lo and behold, Monday, so the CPAC was on Saturday. And all of a sudden, Monday, there's a raid. Uh, I don't know. And when you kind of compare it to like some of the other things that the FBI had, they had a Hunter Biden's laptop for, wow, at least six months before the uh, the elect the presidential election, and they uh, denied that they ever had it. Uh, they never did anything to Hillary Clinton and all the all of her emails and the unsecure server that she had in her home. It's kind of hard to like wonder if we haven't turned into like a uh, one of these uh, third world countries into a, a banana republic of some sort. <laughs> So my get it together is to the FBI and all those people out there who actually think our government works. They all need to get together. I'm guessing you don't like Banana Republic clothing then. <laughs> uh, I'm not talking about Banana Republic clothing. I'm talking <laughs> oh. about. <laughs> Just helping clarify. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have uh, two get it togethers. Number one. And it's sad that I have so many get togethers and no like wins. Um, the first get together is the, not the personal one. It's the, what the hell are you trying to do? Start world war three Pelosi one. <laughs> like China says, don't do this. And you start doing all sorts of things. Uh, man, you are playing with a big dog thinking you have a stick and you don't. Um, mostly because anyone who doesn't understand this world politics, whether or not we want to accept it or not where U.S. politics are. Yes, anyone in America has a fair chance at running for president. It doesn't matter sex or race or creed. Um, the rest of the world does not see these things this way and is ignorant for anyone to risk a, a conflict, an unnecessary conflict trying to be bold or brash or make a point, especially after um, ultimately you committed insider trading, knowing that there was a bill that could pass, would pass for a chip uh, 
surplus of funds and your husband goes and buys a bunch of stock and sells it as soon as he made we'll just say a lot of money how is that okay like literally how is that okay if anyone if any of us normal plebes ever did it we'd all be arrested if i did it trading. yeah if i did it i'd be done for the rest of my life i wouldn't even be able to find a job afterwards because it's a felony exactly. and that's assuming i got out of prison after they took my money Yep, because that would be you'd be found as for insider trading. Absolutely. So that is my first get it together. My second get it together goes to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> so no joke. I'm trying, for this one. <laughs> I'm trying to leave work the other day and my car won't start. Started a little rough in the morning, so I was a little worried. Uh, I'm leaving my store and I had to go get someone to help me jumpstart my car. So finally find someone is kind enough to help me jumpstart my car. Thank you very much, anonymous person. And after that happens, I'm heading home. Now, what I know is since my car wouldn't start, if I stop it, it probably won't start again. So I have to find some place that will sell me a battery that I can install. I can do this myself in five minutes. I just need to know there's a battery there that I can purchase and put in. I've got the tools. I've got everything else I need. Just need to know someone's got a battery. And O'Reilly Auto Parts had the battery for $201, as did Advance Auto Parts. Uh, very fortunately, Walmart had the battery for $149. Are you saying, are you really sure it's fortunate? <laughs> this is where it gets tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. <laughs> so I go and I start heading home from work and I call the first of three Walmarts. And the first thing I'm asking them is, okay, here's who I want to pass, X, Y, Z. And I'm getting ready to pass the first one. I finally get a hold of someone, did get hung up on twice, finally get a hold of someone. And I'm like, can I speak with someone in the automotive department? Get hung up on a third time. And I'm like, all right, I'm not going to stop here. Clearly, I'm going to go to the next Walmart um, because the Walmarts get bigger and in my mind, actually better as I get closer to home. So I'm about, I'm approaching actually the second Walmart pretty quickly at this point. And and like literally I couldn't get anyone to answer the goddamn phone. So then there's the third one. Now this one I've got 15 minutes between the second and the third one. Don't take that highway exit off of 470. I'm going to go take the next one. And I've got 15 minutes. Um, I did get hung up on once. The second time I'm like, hey, I'm just trying to find someone in automotive. Can you please help me find someone in automotive that can tell me that you have this 151 battery in stock? I just need to know you have it in stock because um, if I go there, it has to be there. Otherwise, I'm going to be in a world of hurt because I'll stop my car and I won't be able to start it. Oh, we've got no one in our automotive department. But if it shows it's online, it's, it's in stock. And I'm like, okay, so you don't have anyone in the whole store that can go over there and just check the automotive batteries and say, yes, I have one. Like, I'm not asking for anything else. Oh, no, sir. And our, our system isn't accurate. Uh, what it tells us is absolutely not right. You're going to have to use your system. Whatever it says online, it'll be in stock. Are you sure? Well, it should be in stock. So you're not sure. Well, it'll be in stock if it says it's online. And I'm like, okay. I don't have many choices here. Like worst case scenario, I beg somebody else to charge my car. And actually what I thought was, this is my mind just being like at this point, whatever. If they don't have the battery I need, I'm going to buy another one and use it to jumpstart my battery, <laughs> go home the next day, return it to get the right one. Right. Right. No problem. Like at the end of the day, I'm just like, this is, this is crummy service. Like screw you guys. That's literally what I thought. And I was like, this is why people steal from Walmart. It's because they give such poor service that there's no loyalty back. Why should there be loyalty? So I arrive at the store. I hesitantly turn off my ignition. I get out of my car. I run over to automotive. It's like blocked off. So like, in my mind, the lady was right. But the, the gate is pretty flexible. And she didn't say anything about the batteries being locked up. And I'm paying. So I push the gate out of my way. I go over, there's my battery. They have these bars blocking the damn batteries. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And I'm thinking, my battery's pretty small. Let's give this a try. Like I'm no master criminal. I'm gonna make this work because I have to. And I 
gently massage my battery between the frame and the bar. And I'm like, yeah. And I quickly throw it in the cart, go up front. And then I'm like, next case, I'm like, man, is this thing not going to ring up up front? Because it was locked up. Who knows? It rings up. I pay my $149 plus my core fee, my core fee. This is foreshadowing. I paid my core fee. And then I go out to my car. No joke. Change the battery. Less than five minutes. Take my core back into the store. Go to guest services. Wait for 20 minutes in line to return my core. Here's really the coup de gras. Here's where Walmart lost me. And now I'm like, yeah, this, this is literally why I'm like that. This they haven't is, lost you yet. No, man. This, But at this point, I'm just like, this is why people steal from you guys. I'm not saying I'm about to do it. I'm just saying I fully understand why anybody else would. Go to the guest service desk. Wait 20 minutes in line. Talk to the representative finally. And she says, oh, you have to do that back in automotive. And I said, there's nobody back in automotive. And she's like... Oh, yes, there is. And I'm like, I just bought my battery and I had to buy it at the self checkout because there was no one back in Ottawa. She's like, I'll call someone to meet you there. And I'm like, how can you call someone to meet me to return a core when you couldn't find someone in the entire store to make sure you had the 151 in stock? Is this for real? And I'm just steaming at this point. And I'm like, okay, be human, relax. And I just mentioned to her, so I called like half an hour ago at this point after waiting in this return line for 20 minutes and they didn't have anyone that could check the instocks of this battery. And she sounded just like you. Are you sure someone's going to be able to meet me back there? And she's like, oh yeah, I'll page them. She pages them. I go back there. There's no one there, but there's this gentleman pulling a pallet jack. And I'm like, sir, I don't know even where to start with the story. Here's the bottom line. You don't want to hear it do you know if there's anyone who can return this core for me? And he's like, I'll help you out. <laughs> what? <laughs> Took him like three minutes, returned my core. I'm finally on my way. And I'm like, is this a training issue? Is this a, oh, the they above. don't care about service issue? I'm just like, this is insane. At the end of the day, they do hold me with some golden handcuffs because I like to change my own oil because I can do it for a fraction literally half the price that any dealership will do it i can use my zero weight 20 mobile one oil and get a zero a mobile one um, fully synthetic twenty thousand mile filter with which i'd never wait that long to change my oil but i can get those things for less than half of what they charge me at the dealership and i'm like i'm still going to keep coming here for these things but this is just ridiculous it's all the above <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening letting me vent <laughs>
Uh, the fried rice uh, was pretty decent. Um, I did have to add a little bit of soy sauce to it just to give it a little bit more moisture. Um, <laughs> and uh, overall, I thought it was a pretty decent place. I'm not sure um, if you talk about like cost value type of thing. Uh, I mean, we did get like large beers, so those were like uh, an extra ten dollars, basically. It's like eight, nine dollars, something like that. So I think the uh, I think full price of of the meal was roughly, I want to say sixty three dollars with tip, or sixty two dollars or sixty dollars right around there, sixty sixty three dollars with tip, and um, I enjoyed it. It was a good time, but I, I think it could have been more fun. Once again, with a larger party, I know I sound like a like a broken record right there. Um, the food was great though. I think you could take a first date there. I think it would be kind of fun. Um, can you hang out with friends there? I'm not sure I'd go hang out with friends there unless I, it's kind of like a, like an, an occasion of some sort. And um, the cook, which is kind of basically like your waiter too, I guess, because he puts the food like right on your plate there. I would give him a nine. I thought he was a pretty fun guy. Uh, I thought he did a good job. Uh, for the most part, my meal was pretty cooked as it should have been cooked. So I'm going to give him a nine. I'll give the food about an 8.5. Uh, the atmosphere that's going to be a little bit more lacking. I'll give that about a seven. Uh, it could be, it could have been better. Um, so I think overall I'm going to give it an eight. All right. So you wouldn't necessarily go there with a bunch of friends, unless it's like an occasion of something. But it would be more fun with a group of people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like usually, like you're not going to go there with a group of friends unless you guys are going there for a reason. You know, it could be like maybe you guys are all getting together to grab dinner and go to a concert or go to the you know like a game or something. Um, I mean, you probably could all just get together and go there for a dinner, but usually when you kind of go into a place like that, I think you're, it's going to be some kind of occasion happening. Um, but yeah, as long as it's like a group of friends going together, yeah, I'd go with a group of friends. Uh, for me, it was an interesting experience. Uh, the hibachi, I think in general, it was great. Uh, would I go there with a group of friends? I don't know. I don't know that I ever go to many restaurants with a group of friends. Like, that's not my goal. My goal is to give quality time to one or two individuals, not groups. So I don't know that my my focus would be so much on that as much as it would be the rest of the experience. And um, the food and then my scallops, the, the filet was flawlessly cooked. Uh, I did a great job. Uh, the filet was great. The scallops uh they had not jumbo sea scallops good size i had the filet and scallop dinner comes with two shrimps of course the noodles and the rice and the veggies um the one downturn was the scallops still had a little bit of sand in them anyone who knows what i'm talking about that grinding feeling of kill you for me though the food ultimately i'm gonna give a pass for that is this one it's just a lesson for me because scallops are that hard to cook um if you don't prep them right it's still an eight or even a nine actually i want to go for a nine for the food and uh, really the food was a win for me i loved the rice i loved the vegetables the filet uh the shrimp the two shrimp i had were uh, dynamite um the scallops the sand was the only problem otherwise the flavor was fantastic the veggies man i love me some good veggies those veggies were good and at the beginning we had the soup and the salad still wondering about the aftermath of that hoping it doesn't have the uh, <laughs> experiences from the tortilla soup live and fresh in mexico and not cooked apparently so with that i mean it'll be interesting but uh the soup was good uh the salad was simple and good the food was dynamite again that's a nine uh that cook the service also really great he was fun he was inviting had no problems uh, he did the food well easily an eight the would I take a friend there? Would I go there with a friend? 100%. Would I take a date there? 100%. As long as I'm not trying to take her on a sexy date. The environment was the only downturn. Um, and what I mean by that is they had absolutely put in some effort. But from an investment standpoint, they were busy on a Monday night. They're winning. It's not because of the environment. It's because of the food. Uh, but the environment is something that would cause me to want to go back. It's one of those areas where, not that I love Benihana, 
but Benihana has them beat with the environment. Ultimately, the environment also a six for me. All, rounding it all up, though, it's still an eight. Like, overall, total experience was an eight. I don't love the location. Um, there were a lot of things I don't love, but there was nothing negative. And the food, again, don't get the scallops, might get some sand, leave the scallops out of it. Everything else I had was delish. It was great. It was fantastic. Highly recommend Mount Fuji there, Parker, Colorado, uh, just a couple blocks west of Parker Road on Lincoln. And it was great. <laughs> know what smarter challenge was bullet train bullet train and bullet train <laughs> what he said <laughs> uh all right so movie review of the bullet train here for everyone uh by the time this comes out it'll probably be out for just a little under a week uh since it the, it did premiere on friday we saw it over the weekend and this will be uh released on thursday uh, assuming that uh, I don't get totally swamped with work, which I shouldn't, uh, hopefully, this week. Um, work happens. It does occasionally, unfortunately. And now you that you just shared with everyone, you don't have an excuse. There's no dating going on. You better get it out on time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know he wasn't going to Benny Hanna's. Where's my show? <laughs> right? <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> uh, so first of all, I thought this movie <laughs> was a lot of fun. I thought, you know, I, like I know, like there's been some people who are like, oh, this movie doesn't look like it'd be all that great. But I thought it was a, it was funny. It had like a nice energy to it. Uh, it had almost like a, it's kind of it had kind of like, um, yeah, the one guy who's um, uh, the main character. I forget what the main character. Brad Pitt. Brad, well, I know the actor's name is Brad Pitt, but I, I was Ladybug. Trying, they literally call him oh, Ladybug. Ladybug. That's why I'm like trying to think of his name. I'm like seven so, spots on your back. So Ladybug, which is Brad Pitt, um, I think it's kind of cool because he's like he's all kind of like trying to be like one with himself and the universe type of thing, and try to just kind of go with the flow and try to turn over a whole new leaf and everything. Which is a perfect transition from his previous movie. What was his previous one? Where Sandra Bullock and Tatum Channing were also in that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he gets half his brain out, blown out. But you find out you only need half a brain. <laughs> was that in Lost City or something like that? It's the Lost City. <laughs> <laughs> I forget that he was in that movie. <laughs> and Tatum Channing was in, and Tatum Channing was in and this so movie. And so was Sandra Bullock. That's what I mean. All three of them. I'm <laughs> telling you, there's ties we haven't quite con comprehended. <laughs> Anyways, uh... I think it's kind of funny how he's like, he doesn't want to fight anybody. And then all these bad things happen to these other people who fight him and stuff. Take the gun. I don't need the gun. Yeah, Take I don't the gun. The gun. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. By the way, the spoiler alert's probably in this movie. Uh, <laughs> too, too late. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess we're, we, we're I, I, like I said, overall, I think it was a fun movie. Uh, there's a lot, some a, a lot of action in there. Um, it made me laugh. I don't know. Like, when I think about a movie and I like try to rate it, I'm hesitant to tell other people anything that's as high as what I really experienced because I don't want them coming back at me. Don't, you know, don't come at me, bro. Uh, because I told them it was outstanding and they don't get the same experience that I do. Now I will say, I don't know that you need to go see this in a giant screen. It was good and it was good action. It really was good action, but it wasn't the kind of action that you get from a Star Wars or like ironically, even Mandalorian, which hasn't been on a big screen. It's not one of those movies where you need to necessarily be fully immersed because you're on a train, but man, the movie was outstanding. I'll tell you what, the one thing I did miss about this movie is that actually not seeing this movie with you. Oh, really? <laughs> Dude, I know the people around me were like, Ugh, dude, stop laughing. There's there's parts in there where I was like the only person laughing in the theater, and I was like the loudest person in there laughing. And I'm like, man, this is where I need Jesse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, fortunately with my showing, I was actually surprised how much of the audience was laughing, but I was absolutely, since I didn't buy my ticket early, I bought it late, kind of like just to the side of center. And I was absolutely the loudest hearing everyone else laughing around. <laughs> <laughs> how do you not laugh at some of those scenes? Oh, I know. Like, <laughs> like when he's fighting the wolf and how the wolf dies. 
Yeah. That was just, that was pretty funny. <laughs> and he's like, how about how like everyone dies, but how great. So here's what I will say. Here's why this movie is outstanding to me. Um, I think you and I have one of the things where we do differ is you found some of the characters super fascinating. There were some of the characters where I'm like, this guy didn't really change the movie for me. They probably could have replaced him, but I know he added value. So I'm not saying get rid of this character. I'm just saying he wasn't that for me. But then there are others where I'm just like, man, this movie was so brilliantly written. And that's where I, I know the critics have torn it apart, some of them. And the audiences have been like, two thumbs up, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like Rotten Tomatoes is like, the critics and the audiences disagree. So with that, what I would say is brilliantly written, um, and not that anyone who was at this level of this movie would not be. So I'm not saying that was a surprise so much. I'm not surprised that David, the director directed something so profound, but how well written it was to tell the storyline as you're leading through through time, almost in reverse, and to get those pieces, it was uh, reminiscent of. Oh man, so many movies that ultimately become cult classics of uh, The Usual Suspects, of Suicide Kings, maybe even Pulp Fiction, even though um Pulp, you know, yeah no pulp fiction absolutely and you have these directors you know the director of pulp fiction who's writing all these movies yeah that's this is in that class this is a future classic possibly now brad pitt's got a lot of stuff going on in life and there's a lot of people who view him negatively just like tom cruise we'll see where he falls in that spectrum because there were great tom cruise movies where it got no traction and then 10 years later you're like you know yeah that movie and they're like oh that movie was great and you're like then why do you say you hate Tom Cruise? He was in that? <laughs> what? <laughs> One thing I really liked about this movie is how all the characters are interconnected mm -hmm. and how they are all intertwined throughout time and how they all come together. You know, there's there's been plenty of movies where they've done that, um, where um, it seems like everyone's like separate people, but then eventually you see how they're all woven together and how they all end up in one in a certain spot. And I loved like how they did that with this one and how they all kind of ended up together. Um, some of the character. Oh, before we jump into the characters, Quentin yeah. Tarantino. That's who I was thinking of. This was like a Quentin Tarantino film, but it wasn't. And what I mean by that is, it was of the same caliber, but more modern and a little lighter. Definitely lighter. Um, so David, uh, is it pronounced uh Light Lighten? Right, that's the director. I'm guessing. <laughs> uh, he also directed Hobbs and Shaw. He directed a ton of stuff. He, the uh, list goes Dead, on forever. Deadpool 2, Atomic Blonde. I love that movie. Uh, and then there's a, he was a, a unaccredited for John Wick and yeah, that's Deadpool. that's a weird one. But one of the things I noticed here with, uh, um, he also did Kick-Ass, I thought. As well, or no, he was he Kick-Ass? Uh, Tangerine. So Tangerine, uh, the character, the guy who played Tangerine, he was uh, the main character from Kick-Ass. Now, if you remember that dorky guy wearing that green jumpsuit, uh, and you look at Tangerine in this movie, you're like, really, is that the same guy? Uh, I thought Tangerine, I think he did a pretty good job uh, playing Tangerine, but I really did like his partner, the black guy. And I know he doesn't bring like a, a ton to the movie, but I think it's actually setting up for a second movie. Uh, with the black guy because all he does is talk about i think it's kind of funny how he talks about a children's cartoon the whole time talking about thomas the train and how each type of person he comes across he breaks it down to one of the characters from thomas the train or whatever that thing is called and he's always trying to find out who the diesel is which is the bad guy or whatever and uh and uh, one of the funny <laughs> <laughs> remember the closing line <laughs> Which, which, how bad you need to go to the bathroom? I got a ballpoint coming out. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like, oh my God, that's one I haven't heard. Um, <laughs> Turtlehead, yes. Ballpoint, no. Right. Well, I get like almost right before that part, I guess. Uh, you see, uh, near the end of the movie, the, the black, uh, the black gentleman, which is Lemon, says, uh, to Brad's Pitt character, Ladybug, hey, I think I got a new, I found myself a new brother because uh, Brad Pitt or Ladybug goes, I so, I'm sorry I, I shot your brother. And he's like, well, that's okay. I got myself a new brother now. <laughs> and he's like, and Brad Pitts go, goes, really? Yeah. 
And he's like, no, just kidding. And then he like <laughs> tackles the guy who's he, about to shoot he Brad Pitt. takes out the guy who was about to kill Pitt. Yeah. Or yeah. Ladybug. Ladybug. But the best part, like near the end, like, like, uh, near, like when they do kind of cut to the credits almost, you see Lemon find this tangerine truck, right? And goes and kills the main bad person. And, uh, and Brad Pitt's character was given the, a tangerine from there. So it almost seems like maybe if they do a second one, Brad Pitt will be the new tangerine and you'll have Lemon as a as a partner there. That's Or that's is kind Brad of Pitt the new Carver and it's Carver, who no. was played by Ryan Reynolds. How much did you get paid for your 20 seconds, right. by the way? No, I think it's <laughs> going to be Lemon and, and Brad Pitt as, as tangerine going after Carver is what I think. If, right. they, if they make a sequel. Well, anything is possible. I mean, like... That's kind of like uh, like that kind of connection there. I kind of enjoyed right there, but I don't know. How about yourself? No, for me. So you mentioned this intertwined piece, and what I was looking for and couldn't find really quickly was Kill Bill. It's very oh, similar yeah. to Kill Bill to me, but written from a different perspective. And that perspective is dynamic, but also inviting. Now, this movie is not for everyone. Um, I'm almost surprised how the audience ultimately has positively rated this movie. Not to the point of it wasn't that great of a movie. Um, and they did, it's it's like a Reservoir Dogs, but a light version. Um, Reservoir Dogs, absolutely, it's going to get a great critical rating, but half the audience that goes and sees one doesn't go see the other. And I, uh, I think this movie is along that line of intellectual and also true writing where there are a lot of messages you have to be intelligent to understand um so you know some political voters won't understand <laughs> is really the point like maybe study a little bit more politics before voting next time um and and, and then wondering why gas is, was five dollars a gallon like don't do that um do a little bit of research then vote um don't just hate someone who's made your life better and you don't even realize it and then vote against them that was i don't even know so with that this movie though um so much fun uh brad pitt did an absolutely amazing job as ladybug joey king and it wasn't until you mentioned the young i mean the older uh child or the younger lady in batman the dark knight rises where i got it i'm like that's where i know this face from and um you know it's interesting because there are some faces where it's just like and you mentioned you, you you know she she was attractive but there was something off and for me i'm like no there's something attractive about her and it's the way she acts the way she carries herself she acts well and she did a dynamic job as of the prince and here's the biggest spoiler alert so if you are going to go see this movie and you don't want to know how it ends tune out now she ends up being the white death's daughter which was kind of like a foregone conclusion right but right at the beginning of the movie it's like she is somebody's daughter like she's she's got daddy issues and she's not waiting for the boyfriend to cure him She's going to go take care well, of daddy. <laughs> I mean, you kind of find out that she's uh, the white dad's daughter, like what, halfway through the movie anyways. Right. But it, it's just, it's so smart the way it was written. And then the way the white death was just like, I know, <laughs> <laughs> like, I know exactly why this happened. Aren't you sad? Your son was killed. No, I had him killed. I, I planned all of this so that all of you who did me some wrong, it's literally like Kill Bill, so that all of you that did me some wrong or like Reservoir Dogs would die in the process for me to get some closure for my life. Yeah, uh, the one of the one of my favorite parts of the movie has to be when um, Ladybug was hiding out in the bathroom. Dude, they're all great parts. So Brad Pitt was fantastic. Dude, if you are a Brad Pitt hater. I love Angelina Jolie too. I also love Red Pit. The part where he's like in the bathroom fiddling around with the smart toilet was, was hilarious. I gotta get one of these. <laughs> Except when he couldn't figure out, like he loved the air dry for the bodate, but couldn't figure <laughs> out why is this thing like shooting water at me? Well, you gotta wet it and clean it before you dry it, bro. <laughs> like I would love a bodate. Like, hey, yeah, free and clear. My underwear lasts forever now. <laughs> <laughs> and then i like how they did like the 60 dollar underwear a pair he's not going to edit that out <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say i also like the how they tell the little story of the life of the water the fiji water bottle 
<laughs> it, it was such a well. That's what I mean, though. It was just written well, and the the directive in this movie, um, the direction this movie takes you is to try to understand. Again, I do think someone of great peace and war knew this movie, and. It's interesting because if you look at some of the wisest men on this planet who ultimately have found peace, they have all been to war. And I'm talking about everyone from generals in armies to Mike Tyson in a boxing ring. And it's not until they've actually gone to war that they realize what true peace really is after something has changed in their lives. And I think someone who wrote this understood both and was trying to make it funny and playful for people, but he showed it so perfectly. And that's the only thing that made it funny was that Brad Pitt was truly at peace. He's like, man, why are people trying to kill me? And you brought this up <laughs> earlier. I just want to go to a Zen garden and, you know, <laughs> go meditate and figure out my life path. <laughs> or figure out what's wrong in my life path. And it's not always that. Uh, and everyone else around him, and he's not listening. This is what's most curious is because he's obviously learned a lot and grown so much in this movie and everyone around him is telling him it's about fate. You, the, all the masters are like, it's about fate. You can't control any of this. This is your fate. I'm lucky. You're unlucky. Fate, fate, fate. And he's like, yeah, well, that's a shitty deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. Like you, you do see that is a recurring theme in there is a, is a, is a fate, right? Fate, no matter what you try to do, Fate is going to take its course no, no matter what. And uh, and I think that gets brought up uh, multiple times, right? You, you, you see the, the the white death's daughter talking about how she's always lucky. You see the ladybug talking about how he's always unlucky. Um, and then you see the the elder, the old uh, the old Japanese guy who comes on, on to the train later on. And he's like uh, talking about fate. You know, it will happen if it happens. <laughs> if, if it's meant to be, it's going to happen, right? That's just, that's just how fate is designed to <laughs> He's talking about Andrew Koji and one of the funniest scenes or one of the memorable funny scenes of this show is when he's on the train towards the end talking to Brad Pitt and he's like, may I please tell you a story? And Brad Pitt's like, no, nope. I'm good. <laughs> like, I'm done. I'm so just a done. Little, just a little story. <laughs> no, nope. no, no, no. I'm going to tell you a short story. <laughs> It'll be quick. <laughs> uh, again, Andrew Koji, for as small of a role as he had in there, did great i agree with that i loved it i loved it. you know who also did a like a small role but did an awesome job was that little that old lady oh yeah i thought you were gonna say ryan reynolds which he did but <laughs> the old lady was great where the guy's like my earmuffs eat a bag of dicks <laughs> <laughs> sorry 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 i'm really trying to work on this <laughs> I, that is probably the point in the movie where I laughed the hardest, mostly because I'm like, oh my God, Zen God, you're like Zen Keeper, you're done now, man. He, I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> Meanwhile, by the way, this old lady had it coming. <laughs> she had everyone talking to her that way for a good reason. Normally, when a door opens, you let people out before in and somebody tried to go out and she's like, me. <laughs> What's your goat sound, right? <laughs> yeah, that's her. And the guy's like, yeah, go jump. But he doesn't, he's not that polite, by the way. <laughs> Rightfully so. Um, with that, it's is it Aaron Taylor that yeah. plays Tangerine? Um, maybe. The, is that the guy from Kick-Ass? Yeah. I actually thought he did a really good job. So did I. And Tatum Channing's bit roles were like, is this about the sex stuff? No. All right, I didn't think so. And then later on, he's got a great walk. <laughs> he wasn't wrong. And he's talking about Aaron Taylor. And uh, Aaron Taylor, I, he, you know, his fate is uh, ends, we'll say, uh, in this show. But with that, ah, for me, he did have a dynamic role. And not that his brother was that different lemon but uh aaron taylor is the guy where i'm like yeah man you're the one of the two i want on my team now here's what's tricky is lemon was the the undying judge of character and i think it's important to have 
one of those in your life always as well. To the point of, he always carries a sticker book, and I loved this part of the movie. He carries a sticker book with Thomas the Train Engines, and you've got a Thomas, and you've got, and he goes through all <laughs> these different things, and at the end, the worst one is the diesel. And I love that because I'm like, is this supposed to be like an environmental comment? Like, why do they always call them diesel? Like, the other ones are burning wood. Diesel burns cleaner. <laughs> it's just crazy. Uh, just a name, but whatever. Uh, but at the end, when he's trying to let his brother know who he thinks killed him, because he thinks he's dead, turns out he's not, he takes that sticker and puts it on that person's back. And I was just like, beautiful. It was beautiful. Like again, so well written. I think I think his the problem with Tangerine's uh character though, and maybe it's just Dude, because, his suit? How much did you pay for that suit? I don't know. But I was just gonna say <laughs> five grand minimum. <laughs> I was gonna say his problem is that I think he was too quick to not listen. Oh yeah, he's like shoot him. Shoot him. If you have a question, shoot him. <laughs> yeah, shoot him and ask questions later. Figure it out later. Uh where I think if he would have like listened to Brad Pitt and uh, maybe to, if you were to listen to Ladybug, he might still be alive. I don't know. Even if he'd been smart enough not to, I agree with you. Is What I'm saying is, had he been smart enough not to listen to the prince? Like exactly. when he listened to the prince, he literally just saw someone he thought was a young girl and didn't realize, dude, this person's a mastermind. When I see that girl, a girl dressed up like a mastermind, like she's just won the last 200 games of chess she played across the world. I'm like... Don't trust a thing she says. He's like, thank you, little lady. <laughs> like, what? The, the one character who I thought kind of got like the short end of the, of the of the stick throughout the whole show was probably the guy who played in the movie Snake Eyes, who was the uh, the dad of the kid who got pushed off the building. In Snake Eyes? Well, you remember the movie Snake Eyes? Yeah. He was like the he's the guy who turned into the uh, the white the white ninja at the end. Um. Andrew Koji? No, not Andrew Koji. Um, the guy, you know, like in the movie Bullet, Bullet Train, right? Yeah. His son got pushed off the roof, and he gets shot oh, by the black guy. Oh, he okay. Was, he, was a, he was like one of the main characters in Snake Eyes. Okay. I didn't even catch that. You didn't know that? No. Yeah, he was like the head of the clan. Snake and, Eye. You mean Snake Eye. Yeah, Snake Eye. I what? thought you meant Snake Eyes with Nick Cage. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, dude, that's a movie about a boxing fight and corrupt cops. <laughs> I'm like, no one got pushed off a roof. Snake Eye. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. The Yes, 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 yes. G.I. Joe version of Snake Eye. Yeah. Okay. Got it. I literally thought you were talking about Nick Cage's Snake Eyes. No, I wasn't talking about Nick Cage. <laughs> well, dude, you said Snake Eyes. I'm like, I, no, I didn't know he was in there. I, well, I, first time I, said, I think the first time I did say Snake Eye, and then you kind of gave me a weird look, so I said Snake Eyes. It's all good. I heard Snake Eyes, and I'm like, what? <laughs> no. Um, yeah, no, he, you know, I don't know that he got the short side, but he definitely had the vulnerable role. I think he kind of, well, he did definitely have a vulnerable role. At the end, if there's a sequel, he is 100% in it. That's true. He did live, so I guess he wasn't, like, totally He didn't short. just live. He, like, survived a gunshot to the gut where he bled more than most people believed their entire lives without dying. <laughs> <laughs> true all right um i guess to kind of wrap it up who's your favorite character oh man i do have to say joey king did an amazing job as their friends to me because i love a good bad guy who's got a reason to be bad and uh joey played that phenomenally i did love aaron taylor as tangerine Michael Shannon is the white death. Did a nice job. Not the face I expected when he took off that mask. Right? Not at all. And when he did, I was just like, eh, I don't love it, but it fits. Ryan Reynolds, like, again, his, like, 20 seconds. Eh. I don't think he'd be your favorite character for 20 seconds. He can't. Seconds. He can't. At the end of the day, a favorite character is absolutely Brad Pitt. Like it has to be. He not only is he the ultimately the star of the movie. Um, Tatum Channing would be at like the close second. By the way, though, the, his his roles and comments for uh, again another person who got paid two million for a day's worth of work. <laughs> um, but 
Brad Pitt really playing his role flawlessly. And it was completely opposite of roles where he was Oscar winning or Oscar worthy. This to me was not an Oscar worthy performance. However, uh, you know, it's like different from Top Gun Maverick in that example. However, you know, if there was like an Emmy or Oscar award for entertainment, he would be eligible, but just not for actual acting. But again, he played his role flawlessly. As much as I talked about Lemon, and I do like Lemon's character, I would have to agree with you. My favorite character is is Ladybug. Ladybug! <laughs> just because, just this whole like, hey man, all I want to do is just go like to go to a temple and meditate, or just want to check out a you know a, a rock zen garden, you know, and and he is always trying to like tried to make peace with everyone but everyone keeps fighting him and for some reason he still ends up on top which i think is great i think and that uh, in no way is a sexual innuendo <laughs> <laughs> and and i do think that, that makes makes his character a lot of fun it is and i think why i like that is because ultimately i can relate i will work my ass off and he does throughout the whole movie. He gives 110%, and he's just trying to find peace. <laughs> and then there are people who just want war. It can be if you're in customer service, a customer. It can be if you're on the other side, an employee and a supervisor, another supervisor, an employee who just want war. And it does. it's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm just trying to get off this train. <laughs> Like, I'm just trying to, like, make us get to the end of the track. That's the win. We collect our money. The company's winning. Let's move on. I think another funny part about that, what we were talking about there, is when he's trying to tell, uh, stop the uh, younger Asian guy and uh, Lemon and him from all from fighting each other. And then the elder uh, comes in and says, hey, this is what he's, you know, we should be doing this. And he's like, and then Brad Pitt's character was like, that's all I was trying to say. <laughs> Yeah, some of the metaphors in that were pretty fantastic. <laughs> That's all I was trying to say. <laughs> Meanwhile, every time he gets a gun and he knows he's going to have future conflict, this again is fate. It's karma. And that's another word you hear on uh, occasion during this movie. Karma is he gets a gun and he has a lethal weapon. And every time he dismembers it, dismantles it, and removes it from his present. He is literally trying to <laughs> do good in the world. He absolutely chose the wrong profession for that. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, would you say, oh, uh, this movie uh, was made available for us to go see by using the AMC movie watcher uh the amc a plus card a was it a, a lister a lister card yeah uh highly recommend that for everyone um it costs uh 22 a month uh depending on what state you're in and uh when you go see a movie anymore nowadays at least here in denver i think it's like around 18 dollars for an evening showing so see two movies it pays for itself see one movie it's pretty much paid for itself you're losing a couple of bucks but it's still worth it you didn't have to actually pay furthermore man I want to give, uh, there's my one shout out. AMC, Arapahoe Crossing, 16, your pretzel bites, always on point. <laughs> People are like, why do you always go to that theater? Because I've gone to other theaters and they do crummy things with their pretzel bites. And this one is always perfect. Literally, I went there and that was what I had to have. That was my dinner. <laughs> it's always your dinner over there. <laughs> it's or snack or post dinner or post snack or that and peach rings or that and peach rings and popcorn but it's always that if they have them they've only I, once not had them i have to make sure i go back sometime this month because i got my birthday drink and birthday popcorn yeah man yeah goonies is supposed to be coming out in a week oh. that would be pretty damn great on a big screen i feel like that i think so too and and that's what i'm taking for granted when i say i don't really need to go see bullet train on a big screen i haven't seen it not on a big screen but big screen always makes a difference um for me though this one is more about the thought provoking action entertainment um writing that goes on and you have to pay attention to all the different steps and if you don't you literally could miss some of the meaning of the movie. They do a good job reeling you in. They made it very simple for those who were not already trying to connect the dots, and that's probably enjoyable for them. It was definitely a good time. Um, anything? Uh, well, before we sign off here, um, what is our uh, next topic? All right, man. We're going to you know take this bullet train with Brad Pitt and ride it a little bit back in time. 
and go to Fight Club. Uh, so Fight Club will be our next Smarter Challenge. Read the book, watch the movie, do both. Your choice, the Scotch. A little bit of Arston. But he said. Yeah, I don't know if that's at all how it's pronounced. Arston. But here's what always gets me is when I see C anything sea cask made by the sea talisker does that well uh there are some scotches that do it really well there are some cognacs that do it really well um made by the sea though but anyway sea ultimately looks like Ovin uh usually sells me so this is another one this may be the last one for a while in our string of uh less expensive scotches trying to see what the differences are as we uh adjust our palette back and forth uh not very expensive right around the 30 dollar price point i think it was 28 um right around that cheap price point but c cask so we're gonna try it we're gonna find out uh this one is a 10 year we'll let you know next week all right and anything you want to say to the people please drink responsibly life is great i hope you feel the same way there are times we all go through some tough things and there are other times when I'm like, man, if you haven't done this, you may consider doing something for yourselves, but for Noah and I, a new restaurant every week, a new scotch every week. This is week 75. Sometimes we've done three or four scotches in one week flights lots of things so it's over 75 scotches that we've tried at this time uh really make sure you're getting a little bit of adventure because with that we always have our smarter challenge sometimes that means reading a book sometimes that means going to go see a movie sometimes that means an adventure beyond could be roswell who knows special episodes Woo! lots of things coming up make sure you're fulfilling your life what does fulfill your life it doesn't have to be expensive I'm not saying it's going to be cheap doesn't have to be hard. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but at the end of the day, you put forth an effort, you get a result. Um, here is what I will leave you guys on before I pass this on to Noah. There's this guy, calls himself Cobra Tate. Cobra Tate, if you ever can give us a little bit of your time, please let us know. Uh, at the end of the day, though, he made a comment about the guy who goes to the gym when he doesn't want to get up and go to the gym versus the guy who goes to the gym only when he wants to get up and go to the gym is the stronger of the two guys. And later The Rock reiterated that. He's like, I saw somebody say this. And I'm gonna say it again because I think it is that profound. And what I'm gonna say is it's not just about going to the gym. It's about fulfilling your life. Uh, the person who will take the chance, take the risk, be uncomfortable, do those things that ultimately can fulfill their lives, even though it means a little bit of extra work. Maybe you have to walk five miles to get to the Botanic Gardens, which you've never been in, you wanna be. Maybe you have to uh, hike three and a half hours to do your first 14 or maybe it's five hours, maybe it's seven hours, by the way, depending on how fast you hike. But with that, take that risk, have that fun, take that challenge for yourself, fulfill your life. And if you don't like it, just don't do it again. For those people who do who don't live in the state of Colorado, what is a 14er? 14,000 feet, baby. <laughs> so that, You're climbing a lot. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> the air gets thin. Bring a beer. It'll make it better. <laughs> no. <laughs> I do anyway, dude. Well, I mean, once you get to the top to or where you get you to the top, you can start to feel the lightheadedness. Make sure you're hydrated. <laughs> Alcohol makes the way down so much faster. <laughs> I fall a few times. It doesn't hurt at all to get home <laughs> the next day. <laughs> wow. Um, I'll just say thank you for all those who have listened to us on the uh, audio side of the platforms that we use, uh, which would be Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and all the such. And also thank you for all those who watch us on YouTube and Rumble. We do greatly appreciate all of you. And hopefully uh, you do enjoy our Smarter Challenges and and the uh, restaurant reviews and all of our uh, wonderful back and forths here. So uh, with that, we want to wish you a good evening. If you do want to become a patron member, it's the very first link down in the description down below. And uh, I will make sure this one does come out on time, even though last week did come it is going to be coming out here in the next day or so. So uh, well, these will be two back to back pretty much. All right. And just so you're forewarned, just like our audience, we're going to start putting some challenges out there. Haven't figured out what the first one is. I'll think of it. 
by next week, but it'll be a challenge of whether I'm wearing a hat or you're wearing a hat, what it is, we're going to ask you guys to vote on the best hat or the best comment. Who knows? Probably for the first week, the best comment or the best opinion. Uh, we want to get you guys involved. Give us some feedback. All right. Thank you very much, and I hope you guys all have a great night. Life is great. Life is great. Na 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 Scotchman. Cheers. We hope you enjoyed this evening's episode of Scotch Hour. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, if you have not done so already, please become a Patreon member with memberships starting as low as one dollar a month. Thank you, and hopefully, you have a wonderful evening.